colonialism, patriarchy, and racism. By solving these issues, we are both addressing the roots of the climate crisis and solving the social justice issues that oppress us. So it's a win-win. Many people pin the start of the climate crisis to the Industrial Revolution. That was when we started digging for coal, mining fossil fuels out of the ground, and burning them. But it actually started long before that. Colonization started the climate crisis and all of the practices it brought. With colonization, European settlers destroyed natural habitats, hunted species to death, and brought in invasive plant species that indigenous and African slaves were forced to grow. With colonialism came the extreme extraction of the earth and the genocide and silencing of the indigenous wisdom of the peoples that have been keeping this earth alive for centuries. With colonialism came the idea that everything on this earth is made for our extraction and that everything is to be bought and sold. According to an article about early Western colonialism and Encyclopedia Britannica, when colonizers arrived to the Americas, they immediately thought of the land, the water, and all of the natural resources in front of them as theirs to claim and extract. Why this entitlement? Because unless someone had explicitly bought the land with a system of currency they valued, it was seen as free pickings. So with colonialism came the idea that nothing, not air, not water, not trees, not animals, not land, was sacred or priceless. And this mindset is the core of how we got to climate disaster. So that's why before the first coal was mined, even before the first factories were opened, the seeds for the climate crisis had already been planted. And the colonialism that caused the climate crisis is still playing out today. For example, former colonized countries emit the least amount of carbon dioxide, but feel the worst effects of the climate crisis. And even though, yes, countries in the global south, like India, do emit large amounts of pollutants, it is because the United States ships our factories overseas so poor people of color can do our dirty work. American corporations save money exploiting workers in India and polluting their air, water, and people. While the poor communities are poisoned and suffer, rich communities in the United States buy these products and enjoy the luxuries of these products without actually having to feel the toxic effects of producing them. It's the same colonial system of forcing people of color to produce and pay the price for luxuries for those in rich white countries. Colonialism never went away. It just evolved. And then there's a next system of oppression very much intertwined with colonialism, racism. There is compelling evidence that increasing social inequality is linked to environmental degradation and that the health of people of color and those living in poverty is negatively impacted by being exposed to higher levels of environmental pollutants than their white and wealthy counterparts. The vast majority of fossil fuel projects and energy extraction sites are built in low-income communities, immigrant communities, and communities of color. Why? because these communities are already victims of the racist system of oppression and governments and corporations can exploit their vulnerability. A 2008 report co-authored by the NRDC reviewed data collected over 20 years and found that more than half the people living within two miles of toxic waste facilities in the United States are people of color. A report in 2016 by the Center for Effective Government, now called the Project for Governmental Oversight, found that people of color are nearly twice as likely, twice as likely as white residents to live within a fence line zone of an industrial facility. The effects of the climate crisis, such as extreme weather conditions, have devastating consequences for communities of color and low-income communities. In the aftermath of such disasters, efforts to rebuild communities of color and low-income communities are often completely inadequate compared to efforts to rebuild higher income and white communities. The most powerful example of this inequity is the communities of color in New Orleans that were affected by Hurricane Katrina. Black homeowners received $8,000 less per family in government aid than white homeowners due to disparities in housing values. In 2013, about 80% of the mostly black residents of the city's Lower Ninth Ward had not returned to their community due to inadequate recovery and rebuilding efforts by the government. None of these examples are a coincidence. Because people of color and immigrants are already victims of racism, they're more vulnerable to corporations targeting them. Because wealthy white citizens have the money, power, and our current racist system on their side, 
corporations would not be able to get away with building toxic chemical or extraction plants in those wealthy white neighborhoods. Take, for example, the Dakota Access Pipeline. A fossil fuel pipeline designed to transport up to half a million barrels of crude oil daily from North Dakota to Illinois. According to ABC News, the construction of the pipeline was originally going to be built through a majority white and non-Indigenous community. But when that community rejected it, in the interest of protecting their water and the health of their citizens, it was then rerouted to instead be built on Indigenous land. And even though there was massive pushback, against the construction of this pipeline on the sacred indigenous land, the outcry of the native peoples was ultimately not respected at all, and the pipeline was built anyway on the indigenous land. Prominent activist, Reverend Jesse Jackson, called the reroute of the Dakota Access Pipeline the ripest case of environmental racism I've seen in a long time. On top of colonialism and racism, there is another system of oppression affecting us, patriarchy. Women are more affected by the climate crisis than men. Roles as primary caregivers and providers of food and fuel for our communities make us more vulnerable when flooding and drought occur. According to the BBC, in Central Africa, where up to 90% of Lake Chad has disappeared, nomadic indigenous groups are particularly at risk. As the lake shoreline recedes, women have to walk farther and farther to collect water for their communities. In the dry season, men head off to the towns, leaving women to take care of their communities. With dry seasons now becoming longer and longer due to climate change, women are working harder and harder to feed and care for our families without support and with less and less resources. That's an example of the climate crisis disproportionately affecting women, and women, being victims of patriarchy, having the burden of dealing with the effects of the climate crisis and it falling on our shoulders. And it is not just women in rural areas who are affected. Women are more likely than men to experience poverty, and have less socioeconomic power, according to the United Nations. This makes it difficult to recover from disasters which affect infrastructure, jobs, and housing. Due to the patriarchal system of oppression that has been holding us back for thousands and thousands of years, we are more affected by the climate crisis, even as we bear the weight of rebuilding and caring for our communities after disaster. This is how systems of oppression intertwine with the climate crisis. People of color, women, poor folks, people with disabilities, people with chronic illnesses, queer people, homeless folks, everyone who is already oppressed, vulnerable, and disadvantaged by society is disproportionately affected by the climate crisis. And these same systems of oppression also helped cause the climate crisis. Now, climate change on its own seems like a huge and insurmountable problem by itself. Factor in the full story and the problem becomes even bigger than that. In order to save our lives, futures, the planet, and everything we hold dear, change needs to happen on a much bigger scale than we initially thought. Climate change demands much bigger and harder solutions than we initially thought. The media, our leaders, businesses, and global corporations need to address climate change not as a standalone issue floating separately from everything else, but instead as the grand culmination of all our societal injustices that have been building up for centuries. And it is our responsibility to speak truth to power call out these systems of oppression and demand the livable earth that we all deserve. We have to demand that those in power get to the roots of the climate crisis and tackle the systems of oppression that caused it in the first place. Thank you.